Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So it's time to get on and start getting things together for Thanksgiving. And I thought we might as well start with the meat. And this video's featured meat would be poultry, whether it be a turkey, a duck, or a chicken. The general concept is the same. So let's get started, dolls. Now here I'm just mixing some of my clays. I'm using some of the living doll clay by Sculpey and I'm mixing it with a dark brown, a white, and I have kind of a tan color. So I mixed a few colors together to kind of get the undertone color of what a turkey would look like after it's roasted. And you know, it's kind of relative depending on how you cook it, whether you put butter on it or marinades or other things that would affect the coloring of the skin. So the color of your turkey or chicken is up to you. It's a matter of personal taste. So how dark or light is totally up to you. Now dolls, I'm not really particular as to what particular poultry I'm making. I'm just trying to create an illusion that looks realistic enough that will make your Thanksgiving or Christmas table setting look realistic. Now as a rule of thumb, my general size and shape of my turkey or poultry body is about the size of pecan. And after I get the size right, I kind of push in a part on the end to make like that concave or open part where the head and neck normally would be. And then I kind of pinch the bottom to narrow it down where the legs are going to sit. And I also push in uh, the concave part where um, they usually have the bag of giblets and things. So dolls do it your own way you don't have to do the concave parts but that's what i do i'm actually right now shaping the legs for the chicken or turkey to make like the little drumstick so you would have a narrow really thin part where the leg or the foot would have been and you have the part where the drummy part is that will be attached to your little pecan shaped body for your chicken now you'll just kind of adjust it and eyeball it now dolls if you're more comfortable working with a picture of an actual chicken or turkey, definitely feel free to do that. Now, when you're attaching the legs, a firm press generally will cause it to stick. You don't have to uh, wet it or do anything like that. Just a firm press. Now, I do do a little bit of blending to make the leg look realistic, to make it look as though the skin is attached to the body so there won't be a line of definition on the sides of the legs, but it's up to you dolls. Again, you're trying to make it realistic, but you, the more you do it, the more times you practice, the better you'll become. My turkeys and chickens definitely look a lot better now than they did when I first start making them. Before this video is over, I'm going to show you some of my early chickens and turkeys because they are really, really funny to look at, but let's go ahead and continue. Now you see I made that little depression area down the middle of the body to give the um, indication that that's the breast part or where the breast meat is. And you do want to kind of thin out the part where the leg and the foot is because that area wouldn't be chunky or thick. So thin that out as much as possible without making it fragile where it'll break. Now the little leg and feet areas are definitely areas you're going to have to practice on. And dolls, I want to encourage you that if you make some mistakes or you don't like the way your first little chicken or turkey turns out, don't feel bad. You can go ahead and do it again. Again, even if you're gifted, you need to practice, especially if you're doing something new. So don't feel discouraged if your first chicken or turkey doesn't turn out the way you like, but don't throw it away. Keep it. Keep it so you'll be able to see your progress on your journey in creating things like this. Now I'm just kind of putting a little indention in the bottom to indicate where that little bone area would be at the bottom of the foot. And now I'm making the wing. And it's just a rolled snake of clay. And then I bent it and flattened the end of it to make it look like that flat piece or flappy piece of the wing. And after I kind of get the general shape that I want, I go ahead and press it onto the body of my bird. And you kind of want it in what I call the shoulder area of the body of the bird. And you do want to do a little bit blending. Now this little tool I have is just kind of a rubber or silicone tool, but you can definitely use a toothpick 
or something else that's flat on the edge to kind of press it down and smooth it into the body of your bird. Take your time. This is definitely edited video. It took me a lot longer to create this than this actual recording. So be patient with yourself while you're learning something new. But I think that looks good and it looks to scale. It fits nicely on my little platter. Now, although I made two turkeys or chickens for the platters, I did make a third chicken and I actually made them more or less to fit a large plate. I do recognize that some of you dolls may not have a platter, but you still want to have a turkey or a chicken on your table. And I made one that would more or less fit on that large plate that I showed at the beginning of the video. So I made the body a little bit shorter and a little stumpier so that it wouldn't be so long and take up so much room on the large plate. So it just gives you another option. So don't feel restricted because there are lots of different birds. I mean, if you really want to get into it, if you wanted to make some uh, little quails or you wanted to make Cornish hens, the concept is all the same for birds, dolls. So call it what you like. You can, like I said, modify the body, but the general concept or shape of any type of fowl for your dollhouse is the same. And I'm not sure if you all can tell with this particular um, bird, but his body is a little bit shorter and a little stumpier than the first one I made. The first one I was more or less trying to make more of a turkey shape, but this one I'm actually trying to make it look more like a chicken. So the body is a little bit shorter and rounder than the original one. And again, keep in mind, dolls, after you have the general overall shape, and you have the arms and the wings or legs attached, you will have to do some refinement. You know, again, use whatever tool you have to shape the legs and thin out um, where the feet would be, smooth out any areas that you need to smooth out. Again, just to give it more perfection, you can add as much or as little detail as you like. I'm actually working on that little cavity part to make it look a little bit more realistic and making sure the edges of the wings blend in nicely so there won't be like a real defined area. And I'm using a, a stylus tool to do that. So again, use whatever you have and just take your time. Just take your time. There is no rush, no deadline. Okay, doll dolls, after I get the general shape that I want or just get to a certain point, just so I don't forget, I actually begin to kind of poke holes in it with a pen to give that um, pluck texture to the outside of your chicken. Now, you can do this or not do it. It's up to you. It's just something I do. I like the way it looks after it's baked. And to me, it really lends to the realism because it actually adds texture to the body or the part that's supposed to look like the skin of your bird. Now, I definitely could have smoothed those legs out some more, but I definitely don't think the dolls would be upset because the turkeys and chickens are going to look really good at the end. Now, dolls, this is the kind of turkey-shaped one, and the other one has the shorter, stumpier body that I consider the chicken one. So let's go ahead and get these baked dolls. Okay, so here they are, both all baked and got the texture on them and i can see the different uh, shades of clay they almost look marbleized but it's going to work out fine by the time i get my colored washes on them my stains and seasoning it'll look great not to mention the glaze so what i do dolls i start out with a general tone of red that i put on top of the brown to me that gives it a nice look because it makes it look like it's been roasted and for this one, I'm going to do um, a yellow color. And you can see now that they're side by side, one looks a little bit smaller than the other one. And I am using the alcohol and acrylic paint wash because the alcohol causes it to dry faster than if it was just water. I'm going to just give that a moment, that little chicken a moment to set. Now I am going to go on here. Now this is the third chicken. I didn't show this one to you dolls when I was making it. I felt like I needed a third one. And because there are going to be so many people in the house during the holidays, they're definitely going to have to have more than one bird. And this one, I wanted it to look as though they had started to carve it. 
So I'm carving out a chunk here on the side in the breast area. And I'm going to use that area again to make it look as though it's been carved or sliced already. So I just pulled a chunk out and then I'm putting in some lighter clay that's more like um, a sliced cooked meat color, a sliced cooked turkey or chicken color and pressing it into that area that I carved the chunk out of. Now dolls, if you prefer to do it another way where you make the body of the turkey light like this little part that I'm tucking in and then painting the outside, or you could do your whole bird that light color and make it just look like a raw chicken. That would be fun too. Now always follow the baking instructions on your polymer clay. I forgot to show you dolls, I did make a few slices of turkey as well. And I'm adding a little texture to them with my little metal brush tool because sliced meat looks fibrous. So you want to simulate that. And it has a lot of strands and textures in it. So that's why I'm using kind of a brushed wire tool to do that. Now here's the other one. I've um, covered it with the paint, the alcohol paint wash with the red and the gold and the burnt sienna and allowing it to dry and allow those colors to fall into the creases and the corners and all the little crevices of the texture I've added to the body of the chicken. And when it comes to colors and tones on your chicken, you can add as much or as little as you like. Now here is the third one, and this is freshly baked. And I, it's time for me to add color to this one as well. So you see one chicken I did a little darker and the other one I made it a little bit lighter. And depending on what colors or washes you put on it, give it a different impression of how you actually cooked it. So dolls, use your creative freedom and do it just like you like it. You don't have to make it like mine. You don't have to make it as dark, but just do it in a way that you're satisfied and pleased with it when it's done. Now here's the one where I made the sliced or the carved piece. And again, I start with the red and red acrylic paint and alcohol wash and again I use the alcohol wash because it dries fast and the alcohol wash is just a couple shots of isopropyl alcohol and whatever acrylic paint you're using and here I am just got them there all drying to allow the colors to stick and begin to cling to the texture of the chicken and I'm just giving you a close-up of that sliced meat and each of the chickens or birds kind of have a different color skin. And again, I'm doing that because I want to make it look as though they were cooked differently. Now here you can see I made a little mess, but I was using chalk pastels to shave onto the top or the surface of the turkey or chicken. I do have a little bit of my glaze on it. I did use a thin coat of triple thick glaze before I added the chalk pastel, but I'm trying to simulate seasonings and spices and I'm allowing that to stick to that first surface be put, before I put my last coat of glaze to seal in my work. Now, after I was comfortable with how my chickens and turkeys and things looked, I wanted to add garnish to the plate. Now, to be absolutely honest, dolls, we never put garnish on our chickens or turkeys before we ate them. It just did not happen. But I thought it would look really cute and really nice on these little platters. So what I did, dolls, I had some leftover fruits and vegetables and things. And I also had some greenery left over for, from some foliage or plant projects. And I thought it looked really cute. Like it looked like it was some parsley or something. So I just tucked it in with a little bit of glue around my bird on the platter and got the little pieces of carrots laying around there. And I thought it looked really, really cute. I guess I could have done some little cranberries or something like that. Now, again, dolls, we never um, actually stuffed our turkeys or chickens. The dressing was always in a bowl. So uh, yeah, I didn't add stuffing because that's not something I did. But I think this turkey that was sliced looks really nice, looks very realistic. I think it turned out really cute. Now you can make yours with any number of garnishes on it. I really love how this finished look is. Now that everything is all dry and seasoned and garnished, I'm just bringing it up close so you dolls can really, really see how nice that texture and color is. 
Now here I'm just adding in green garnish pieces around the bottom of the platter. Now guys, I already added glue under my turkey, so I didn't add any additional glue. I just used the glue that was oozing out along the edges. And the other garnish that I was using, like the carrots and things, those are leftover vegetables that I really didn't like the way they turned out when I made them. So I sliced them up with my craft knife and put them around my chickens and turkeys. So they came in handy as well. That's why I tell you dolls, don't throw anything away. Any of your spares, any of your fails, just keep them. You'll be able to use them for something else. Now to me dolls, something like this adding garnish is one of those things that you sometimes don't really know when to stop. It's like distressing something. You think that a little bit is good, more is better. You can really get a little bit carried away when you're having so much fun. <laughs> so that has sliced carrots on it instead of the big carrot. And I think it really turned out cute. Oh, I wanted to show you dolls one of my early birds. Ha, early birds. But one of the first turkeys or chickens that I made because I want you to see what it looks like in comparison. And I'm showing you dolls this because I want you to understand that even if you're gifted, you have to practice. That first turkey looked a little funny, but the more I did it, the better I got, the more refined my process became. I'm sure the turkeys and chickens that I'll be making five years from now will look even more realistic than the ones I make today. So don't quit trying dolls. Keep on working, keep on creating. Don't be down on yourself if it doesn't come out perfect the first time. We learn from our mistakes and our errors. Just don't stop creating. Now, if you dolls enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe. And always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have so many more food things I want to show you before the end of the month or before we get to the actual Thanksgiving holiday. So stay tuned. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.